Hey kids, do you experience monthly uterus torture? And also, are you autistic? Because if those things are true, I've got just the video for you. That rhymed. Also, that was a horrifying intro. Remind me to never say anything like that ever again. Um, anyway, hi. We're talking about autism and periods today. And it shall be a fun time because I declare it as such. Ow, oh my goodness, wow. Okay, so anyway, you are likely thinking, what is the intersection between autism and periods, which is super incredibly valid, but as a population, autistic people are more likely to struggle with the whole menstrual situation than neurotypicals. So today we are going to talk about it so that if you need the words to explain what you're experiencing to make it a little less difficult, you now have them, and also so that we can all work together to come up with some solutions to make this time of the month maybe a little bit less bad. Or maybe at least medium rare, I guess. So the first thing we're going to cover is the education system. Now my sex education took place within the US public school system. I would love to think that other countries do a better job than we do. I don't know if that's necessarily true. But anyway, either way, people feel really uncomfy talking about puberty stuff, so they A, give little to no information, and B, cloud it in so many metaphors and badly worded explanations to make themselves more comfortable and avoid saying the actual thing that we don't know what's going on. And for people who are special needs, which is a whole can of worms I'm not gonna get into right now, they often skip sex out altogether, cause you know, us autistic and disabled people don't have sex, right? <laughs> for legal reasons, that's a joke. But anyway, autistic people thrive on knowing in depth what is going to happen, especially if that thing is going to be sensory hell. So when you have little to no information going into a thing, you are automatically set up to have a rough go of it. So, well, there's that. The second thing is that, as we talked about in my Audi Gender and Neuroqueer video, autistic people are three to six times more likely to identify as trans and or non-binary than neurotypicals. Now, I'm a cis person, but I cannot imagine that having a period when you do not identify solely as a woman really just doesn't do fun stuff in the dysphoria category. So on behalf of uteruses or uteri, I sincerely apologize. We're also more likely to have increased issues with regulating and managing emotions, as well as heightened sensory issues before, during, and or after a period, which doesn't help. Also, when you have heightened sensory issues, your emotional regulation gets worse and vice versa. And I shouldn't have to say this, but periods are a sensory experience. There are smells and the feeling of blood and also the whole pain thing, which I mean, we're significantly more likely to report that pain is intolerable and the sensory experience of a pad or a tampon or whatever menstrual product you choose. Also, executive dysfunction issues often worsen during your period, which can make the act of changing said menstrual products significantly more difficult. And autistic people are also significantly more likely than neurotypicals to have comorbidities like hypermobility disorders such as EDS and Marfan's, I have a video about that over here, endometriosis, irritable bowel syndrome, migraines, and all other fun and spicy chronic pain situations, which are typically made so much worse by periods. I know that when I get mine, every single one of my disabilities likes to remind me that it exists in case I forgot. And then my anxiety and depression and sensory issues just go through the roof. And um, due to the nice old comorbidity of migraines, I can't actually go in any of the birth controls that might do something because there's like a teensy risk of me having a stroke. So I'll just continue to vibe like this forever. This is, this is fine. Anyway, moving on. So another thing is that periods really don't come directly on the day that they're supposed to come. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late, and sometimes you really start to worry that you're pregnant, even though you're both single and also a lesbian. And another thing autistic people simply do not vibe with is unpredictability. So that's a thing. So in total, there's the whole emotions being whack in relation to an event that happens once a month that's never precisely regular or same every single time, and your body also going whack, and then plot twist, everything is also a sensory mess with that event. It's just so delightful. Yay, autistic people, woohoo. Okay, now that I've sufficiently complained for a while and explained why periods are the worst thing ever, let's talk about how to make them maybe slightly less worse because, well, they're such a large proportion of our lives, which is really horrifying to think about. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna not, we're gonna move on anyway. So the first and more obvious thing is to educate yourself. When the education system fails you, as it often does, you gotta outsource. I will include some great resources below that should explain the things and stuff more clearly and concisely than your health teacher could have ever dreamed because knowledge is power. I also recommend preparing a script for coping with various period related situations like how to ask somebody for a tampon or what to do if your pad leaks. And then in that moment, you'll have something ready in your brain so that it's not 
a whole extra thing that you have to think about in addition to everything else. Also, don't be afraid to experiment with different types of period products to see what the best sensory experience is for you. I know that I went through five or six different types of pads before I found one that I could tolerate. Most period products are individually wrapped within the massive package. So if you try one and you're like, oh, this is a nope, local women's shelters are usually very happy to have the rest of the container as a donation. Some autistic people also wear panty liners every day. So the switch to a pad when you're on your period doesn't feel as sensorially jarring or upsetting every single time. And I highly recommend trying that out if you need to. Um, there's also period products that are marketed specifically as sensory friendly. So just do some research, try stuff out and see what works best for you. There are also a million different period trackers out there and you may use whatever one brings you the most joy, um, but I highly recommend having one because, I mean, even if they're not particularly regular, which mine is definitely not, it's at least a vague guide and then you can see what your patterns might be. I use Clue and then I also have this great app called Bearable, which is more personalized in the sense of chronic pain related stuff as opposed to period things. And it's helped me to realize things about how um, various chronic pains are related to periods and also figuring out things that I'm allergic to, which is really great for tracking that kind of stuff and also logging when you take medication. But anyway, yes, so tracking apps are very good and very helpful. If you all have faves, please plop them into the comments. I would love to hear them. And uh, what's the last? Oh, now when you actually have your period, I recommend setting a timer to remind you when to change your sanitary products so that you don't forget. Also, always have your meltdown kit ready because you're gonna be more likely to melt down and be forgiving of yourself for overloading it for melting down. Give yourself extra time throughout the day to recover and to regulate your senses so that you can actually get through the entire day because periods are hard and they're exhausting and you should be kind to yourself because you deserve it. Anyway, that's all I have for today. If you have any advice, any tools, any resources, whatever, any of the above that you want other people to see, you can plop them into the comments. I would really appreciate it. I will also include some resources in the description. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. Remember your story isn't over, it has only just begun and I look forward to seeing you, my dear, in the next one.